Today I'm back with barn sprite number three. Last time I took the head off of the engine. The engine was seized up and I managed to get it unstuck. It turns freely now. So today, first thing I need to do is put the engine back together and then let's see if we can get it running. Last time when I left the car, I left the cylinders filled up. As you can see, it's all leaked down past the pistons and the rings. I need to pull this head gasket off and get everything cleaned up. The engine tag is missing here, so that's a good indication that this engine has been rebuilt before. I like using a super scraper to clean these up. These are actually made here in Iowa. I either had a choice of reusing the original head gasket or this one, which is for a one liter engine. For what we're doing here, this will work just fine. Before I set the head on, I want to pull this little bypass hose off. It looks like it was installed with the radiator out, so I need to get the hose clamp turned so I can get to it. Pulled right off. This is always one thing to inspect on these cars. This little fitting that comes out of the water pump. This can easily have been rusted away. You also need to check the one on the bottom of the head and make sure that they're both there and in okay shape. Here's the tube on the underside of the head. Need to get this hose off as well and check to make sure that fitting is okay. Looks like it's still okay. I need to get the underside of the head cleaned up as well. So I'll use the super scraper again. You want to put out a new piece of hose to use here. Put the clamp on. Need to put the other clamp on now. Now before I tighten it down anymore, I need to make sure that the hose up here is going on correctly. Let's try a pick instead. Well, as far as I can tell, I think the hose is on now. I'm just going to bring the head down a little bit. This is my low power impact. And I'll be, I'll be making sure that the push rods are in the right place and making sure that the hose is going on. The push rods are all in place. I'm going to move the hose up, make sure that it is fully engaged enough with the head. Now I'm going to bolt up the intake and exhaust and I'll come back and torque this. I just want to make sure that everything is working first. There are two studs back here that had come out. So I'm going to put some red Loctite on them when I stick them back in so that hopefully next time they stay with the head. I did clean the ends of these studs on the wire wheel. You need to put these center fasteners on before you've slid the whole thing back, otherwise you won't have any access to them. I 
Now I can tighten them all up. These nuts are quarter inch Whitworth. This might take me a while. Now I can torque these down to 25 foot-pounds. Because I changed the head gasket, the valve adjustment will be off slightly, but it shouldn't have changed enough to affect whether it will run or not. So at this point, I'm just going to leave it alone, and let's see if the engine even runs. Now let's make sure it still cranks over. That sounds good. The next thing we need to do is check and see if we have any spark. So I'll put my spark tester on one of the spark plug wires. Now if we have any spark, we should see it flash right here. I need to turn the ignition on, then I can pull this and crank the engine over. I'm going to manually turn the ignition on by applying the negative side of the battery here to the coil, which is our hot side on a positive ground vehicle. Now when I crank it over, we should see it flash here if the, if the ignition system is working. Okay, we don't have any spark, so let's take a look at the points. The rotor itself looks all right. The underside of the cap is dirty, but it's okay. The points look super crusty. Definitely going to have to clean these up. Just file this down a little bit. You know it's bad when you can see it flaking out immediately from in between the points. Now I'll take my Dremel tool and get what I can with that. Let's try this again now. I'm going to crank it over and if the points are working now, we should see a spark down there. It was sparking pretty good. So now we know we have ignition at the distributor. Put the cap back on. We'll see if we have spark up at the spark plugs. Everything is back together now. I'm going to connect the coil up to power. Crank it over again. We'll see if we have any spark up at the spark plugs now. I don't know if you can see that, but it was flashing there, so we do have spark. Now if we get fuel, it should run. On this side, we have a pipe right here. This is where the fuel comes up from the fuel tank. Then it goes to a hose over to the fuel pump, from the fuel pump out another hose, and then up here, which feeds the carburetors. These hoses look pretty terrible, so I'm going to undo this hose right here and hook up my IV fuel drip directly to this. That way I can leave all of the leaks that are going to happen here for another day. I have my little fuel bottle hooked up now. Hose comes down here and connects up to that pipe that goes to the carbs. Let's turn the fuel on. Okay, we got fuel leaking on the back carb. Let's turn the fuel off for a second. There, now it's leaking on the front. So we know the fuel bowls are filled up on both carbs now. Pistons are free, they're not stuck. Let's see if it starts. I'm going to hold the choke up with this hand, run the starter with this one. I 
All right, let's put a jump pack on it. Wants to run. Try to work the throttle and the choke at the same time. Okay, it looks like it runs. That's all I have time for today. It's been a long time coming to get Barn Sprite number three up and running. Now that the engine runs, I'm more motivated to get this car finished. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.